uh, Skylar, thanks once again. I know these, they seem simple, these webinars, and to some extent they are from a Lean Frontiers point of view, but I know you put in quite a bit of time and in, um, in preparation for these. So once again, thanks to Lean Frontiers from both Gwen and I for you, for you doing this. So Gwen, we had a discussion on September the 28th last year, it might've been 27th. We mapped out the connection between work standards and making them visual. And we talked about visual work standards. So we're gonna go a bit further down that path today. So in, I think it was uh, early December, we were talking about uh, uh, some other stuff related to visual thinking and you said to me, and I wrote it down, so let me read it so I get the quote right. Visual thinking develops people and people develop devices that express that thinking. So I, I wanna start by drawing out a couple of things from that, what you said to me, because like a lot of things, you said it, I didn't listen properly, <laughs> enough to write it down, as I guess, and then it started to think about it and sink in. Um, so I'm not sure it sunk into me. So even if no one else benefits, I'm gonna benefit from this answer, but I'm sure everyone will. So what do you mean by visual thinking? What do you mean by visual thinking and how does it develop people? Mm. Thank you, and thank you. Thank you for the great question, but also thank you for inviting me back. I gotcha. love our conversations, Oscar. You're such a, a, a intelligent, I suppose that sounds like an underhanded comment, but you're just so smart about <laughs> No, you can keep things. going. I don't mind if you keep going <laughs> okay. on that one. And handsome and charming, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've please, been meaning to say. Uh, but I'm going. thrilled to be here um, because uh, really my conversations with you always uh, help me think better. And I really appreciate that. I love your way and I love being here. And of course, I love talking about visual thinking. Yeah, you are so, the best at that. Yeah, and one of the reasons why I've been able to do it as a, uh, a career is because the, the field itself has been teaching me from the beginning it didn't exist as a field when I started, but as I, I began to get into it, it was clear to me that there were concepts, there were fundamental concepts and anchor points and premises and principles that were large. And as I began to explore them, at the beginning, I wasn't thinking about visual thinking. I was thinking about the visual workplace. And I did it as an adaptation because I failed so miserably in the 1980s with 5S. I felt the power of the operator. I felt the power of the people who were doing the work, who were working with the content, the people in offices, the people on the, at the machine, the people on the shop floor. I felt their power and resourcefulness, but I didn't know how to get to them. I didn't know how to get this into an expression that could be seen, could be visual. So it took me quite a while to come upon uh, a declaration, which is visuality is about thinking. It's a language first. It is a mechanism for expressing. And what we're expressing on the business side of visuality is the vital information that is the work content or is the how of the work content. But that still didn't give me an engine that could be mobilized to trigger visual devices instead of just showing people a visual device and say, and say, hey, can you use this one? How do you make that language generative so that the person is actually creating a vocabulary, a vocabulary of visual devices? And the, the doorway to that I found to be two pieces and I have prepared uh, some slides so I can respond to this question rather clearly using them and I'll show them in a moment. The two en engines are the person themselves, what I call the eye. Now you may think I'm talking about the eye eye because we're talking about visuality, but I'm talking about the personhood, the individual. You, Oscar, me, Gwendolyn, Skylar, as a person, and th that person as a resource of thinking and invention, that I, what I come to call I driven. And the other engine of visuality is the metric we use to discover 
the need for visuality. And that's called motion. Ono came up with motion. Taichi Ono came up with motion way back in the 1960s when he was trying to identify what, what was taking time and resources and not giving him anything back. He was a very aggressive uh, leader, a very aggressive strategist. And he was always thinking about what was eating his lunch. Always, what was eating the lunch that we should have, but taking that resource away from us. And he named motion, motion moving without working. He named it because um, he saw a man one day at a machine watching the machine work. And he said, wait a minute, the machine is working. The man is moving, but he's not doing any work. I have another waste, motion, moving without working. I capitalized that when I wrote on my, my first book, I was looking for a metric. And motion is the way that we dig into the work environment in order to see what's missing. Motion is a footprint of, this is what's really cool. Motion is a footprint of an invisible enemy. It is the only piece that we're able to see of this enemy. We move and we don't work because there are information deficits. Information deficits by definition are deficits. They're not there. Missing answers, missing information. And that- just, just on that on that point mm -hmm. you just made then, it's mm -hmm. it's almost it's it's uh, missing information is a really, really tough one, isn't it? Because if it's not there, if it's missing, you're not going to see it's missing because you can't see something that's exactly. missing. Exactly. So it's a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? It is. It's a real paradox. Yeah, and and paradox, what you have to look word. for, no, conundrum is absolutely the right word. What you have to look for is its footprint. Now, its gross footprint is cost. Its gross footprint is delays. Its gross footprint is struggle. But how do you capitalize on that, on the problem and turn it, actually use it to turn it into a solution. Well, that, well, that's what a visual thinker does. A visual thinker yeah. knows. It's someone with the ability to recognize motion, the footprint, to see the footprint and to back up and find the information deficit that triggered that footprint and then to eliminate both through solutions that are visual. That sure. is the definition of visual thinking. The ability Excellent. of a person to recognize motion and the information deficits that trigger that motion and eliminate both through solutions that are visual. And that's how the thinking produces devices. Sure. So let me, I don't wanna, no, as I don't a, know as if a, I should as go as into my- to, as a, So what you're saying, what I understood you to be saying there is if we just consider visual workplace and visual management, then we're just seeing things. Um, it, whereas visual thinking is understanding and recognizing and then developing the ability to apply the thinking pattern that will create more and more and more and more. Yes, it's really, you know, I will sound a little bit self-important if I say, but it's really brilliant. And I really consider it a gift that's been given in my life. I am not a brilliant person, but I do listen and I listen. <laughs> I, I do listen well. And this came floating down one night. I remember it was in 1994 when I was writing my first book and I was looking and I was looking for a way to dig in and it came floating down and I thought, this is it. So, so what's so beautiful about motion is that this person I identified before, this I, this individual has all they need in their hands, their feet, their mouth, to find their own motion. It's their mouth that opens and asks a question. It's their, they're in motion. It's their mouth that opens and answers a question. They're in motion. They caught motion from someone else who asked the question. Oh. It's their legs that take them around their office, their machining center, looking for something. That yeah, isn't so this there. Question, this question mm -hmm. of how it develops people, then I guess, how does it develop people? Does it empower them? What is the development? Oh, it's of so people? beautiful. Yes, thank you. This is what happens when a person creates visual devices, eye driven. 
they answer the questions that are eating their lunch. And when those are visually answered in the form of visual devices, I have a, 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 a good slide to, to illustrate this that'll bring it on home. They get control of their corner of the world. Yeah, right. And when they get control, this is a little subtle, but it's what I observed. And God gave me, thank God, gave me the eyes to see what was happening is that when people got control of their corner of the world, they relaxed. And when they relaxed, they grew. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was exquisite because it, it was as though some space opened up inside of them, which yeah. is in fact necessary when we grow. Yeah, it's right. very hard to grow through adversity. <clears throat> we need a moment of rest just to let that little bit of space open up in us and then we grow into that space and that of course is continuous so so, so Gwen, never, thinking about I, the, thinking about ahead, the work please. standards thing then what i heard you say then i haven't sort of thought about this before mm -hmm. you know work standards traditionally are a pile of documents what we're saying therefore if we can get people to start visually thinking in terms of their work standards that's going to empower them to almost embed work standards within their own work environment. Is that, what, yes. is that where we're heading? <clears throat> that is exactly where we're heading. And uh, you're, you're called doorway number two in my model. And doorway number two is quite a passive doorway, but so important. There are so many companies that have been helped by TWI, by all the work you're doing, because they've realized that they needed to document what yep. they were only talking about. But and that, that might not be enough. <laughs> well, no, 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 but it's such a such an extraordinary beginning. No, it's extraordinary. The whole organization goes, oh, at last, I have what you said yesterday. I have it today. It's the same thing. I've got a work standard and I can do it. People come to work to be heroes. People come to work to master, to be excellent. They want to be excellent. One of these times we can have a session, you and I, and I will tell you what I discovered about this built-in excellence. It's absolutely built into our brain function. We seek the next level. And when we're stopped, we get frustrated. We, when we are stopped, not from doing the work, but from excellence, we want to do the work well. So this first doorway where the standards are documented and then they're made flat visuals. They're just visual indicators. They have no power at all. No. They have no control. They have no embeddedness. They're just telling you. Yeah. But it's a big step forward and never, never, uh, never uh, underestimate the contribution that, that this no, makes. No, it's a necessary step. Really So perhaps you could show us, you've mentioned an example. Perhaps yeah, we sure. can show us some examples right. that you're referring to. So, so I'm not sure... Uh, I, I sort of the direction we're going is a little bit different. So I'm going to build the um, build the discussion a tiny bit, if I may, because uh, sure. I kind of organized my slides around the, the information that was in my head. But I want to show you to begin with information deficits. They're so commonplace information deficits. This is a workplace. All of these are corners of workplaces that don't speak. The information is there. You can't see it full of information deficits full of missing answers and therefore full of motion. Okay, so that's a point that we covered, but all of these, you know, I purposely pick these slides because they're neat and clean. You know, if you're doing 5S, you're good 5S, you haven't gotten to the lines and the labels yet, but it's not madness, it's not a mess, but it's still a struggle for people working in this environment. There's so much information that is non-physical. Oh, and here's our definition. A visual workplace, pardon me, Oscar, I have to get the, is populated by hundreds, even thousands, thousands of visual devices that are invented by a workforce that knows how to think visually. Here's the definition I mentioned yeah, before. Recognize motion and the information deficits that made that footprint, but are invisible, and then get rid of both of them sure. through solutions that are visual. It's like a big game hunting. This is the way we, we talk about it. It's kind of cute, but it's absolutely true. You track it down like a big game hunter. And it's exciting to find your motion. You become a scientist of motion. This is what we, we talk this way to executives and to operators. Become scientists of your own motion. 
Here's the definition of motion. Motion is moving without working. And here, perhaps this is too much, but anyway, here are its forms. They're so common. They're very similar to the 5S list. Only when we understand that it, 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 this is continuous, counting, counting again, and asking and interrupting, all of this is motion. And you know what? It's invisible. Anything you have to do that is not your work is motion. Hmm? I don't know why this is here. This is Raquel. Hmm, I didn't mean to place this here. It's the same thing. Hmm? This is his need to know. I wonder why it's here. Because I haven't introduced need to know, but I will in a moment, obviously. This is his after, a workplace that speaks. So let's talk about the I in the what do I need to know. This system of thinking first. Sure. Not solutions. People get very seduced by the visual devices. But if the thinking isn't there, you can't do it again. You can just copy somebody else's device. Yeah. But when you can actually look locally in your own environment and track down your motion and create visual devices that make those information deficits. Man, this sequence looks really weird to me. Hold on for a second. So just while you're hunting there, um, yeah, thank I you. guess what struck me... <clears throat> is to be able to recognize those forms of motion, to be able to have that A minus B situation, mm -hmm. you must be clear on your work standards. For, you must have standards in place to be able to identify we're not meeting those standards. Yeah, not that, necessarily. That you've got to be able to create a gap. The gap's got to be identifiable based on something. There are lots of companies that begin with... Um, that begin with standards but stop there yeah right and they don't know where to go next they just audit the standards and they begin to try to get people to comply to the standard and it it's not a generative position it isn't it isn't a decision that will actually allow you to do iterations to explore to discover the, that's the problem if you stop with written standards. You make them visual, as we discussed the last time, and I think we did a good job in showing how to make that translation. Yep. But the next step is to embed that information so that it becomes part of the landscape of work, sure. part and parcel of the landscape of work. And that is the job of visuality. So we want a workplace that speaks, just as Ono says here. People don't come to Toyota to work, they come to think. We want a workplace that speaks, but people have to know how to find their vocabulary, how to express that and how to embed it. That's the purpose of visuality. So excuse me for interrupting you, I wanted to add that. Oh, that's fine. So to, to you were gonna bring up a couple of examples? Well, I kind of did, this is more conceptual. I'll give you this example, but I want to take you through the need to know and need to share. Sure. Oh, no, just that was one of the know. questions. Mm -hmm. um, that was one of the questions. And by the way, Daniel King, thank you very much for submitting that question. It says, can you define, explain what is meant by a need to know builds eye driven ownership? So I guess that's going yes. to lead into- We are Daniel's right question. in the middle of that now. Thanks, Daniel. So, what I'm going, and this has to do with the other, some of the other questions that were sent in to you about the difference between methodology and a, in a, and a tool. Sure, what I'm sure, about sure. to show you is a powerful concept. This is not methodology, but lots of people who are listening right now will take this and run it for four or five months, and then they'll hit a wall. They won't be able to go any further, but they will take <laughs> the first of the two driving questions, excuse me they will take this question. And Oscar, you asked me not to only do one of them, so I'm only gonna do one of them today. Let me see if I can get this right. There are two driving questions that drive a visual workplace. This is concept, not methodology. The first is, what do I need to know? And when we look at that question, we notice some really interesting things. The arrows point in. That means that we are going to pull the information to us. When we see the motion, we turn it into a visual device that holds information and then we pull it to us. That pink is a visual device that resulted from motion that we noticed 
and we put the information in place and we pull that information to us when and as we need it. This is so beautiful. Visuality is a pull system. Yeah, it's good. a pull system and it is current and relevant. It isn't somebody else's idea about what I need to know. It's what I need to know. Excuse me, I'm rattling a bit. Did you want to say something? No, no, no. This is okay. No, 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 no. Okay. No. The I here is the difference. Visuality, especially in companies that are just beginning this journey, companies that don't yet have high performance work teams, it is I driven, not team driven. Sure. It is the individual saying, what do I need to know? This is not methodology, but it does trigger many, many visual devices. It's just that you can't really build layers on it. They are there are layers of function in visuality. And this is conceptual. It is powerful. And what happens, let me see if it's here. Am I going the right way? Oh, okay. I'm going to show you an example. So here's an example of eye-driven visuality that just knocked my socks off. It's called doorway number one. I skipped over the, the doorways a moment ago because I was a little bit thrown by, by our discussion versus that sequence. But I was working with a, a heavy duty trailer company in the Netherlands. Wonderful, vigorous, strong-minded, rough and very rough Dutchmen, so smart they do. Men and women play three-dimensional chess all the time. They're very smart people, very articulate. And we teach them how to think visually. We teach them about motion. And I come into this one day. I get to the plant around 6 in the morning to take a look around before we begin training at 7.30. And this is Jean's area and Victor's area. And I'm looking at this configuration, which is part of the methodology, laying down borders, laying down the visual wear borders and addresses, if possible ID labels, is methodology. And I'm, and I'm looking at this, the borders are down, there are no addresses, I'm trying to figure it out. I cannot figure out what's the big square and the little square? What's the big square and the little square? What the heck is this? This is an assembly welding area. And there's Victor and Jean. And I went to Victor and I said, Victor, I don't get it. Tell me, what the heck is this? He said, yeah, we don't, we're out of space here. We don't have enough space. So those are bogeys, they're wheel assemblies. And he said, he said, you see, the thing is, sometimes we have a lot. And sometimes we have a little. But we never have a lot and a little at the same time so we can use the same space. I mean, that's beyond thinking that's simply genius oh mm. my god they're building dimensionally the use of the floor based on content based on time they know their standards they know what's coming and they know they can use the same spot on the floor for two completely different uh work sequences where does this come from? It doesn't come from my teaching. I never showed them. I did show them double border function that was invented in 1996 by a guy named Gary. I did show them that. They adapted it into this, a double border function. So that's, what, that's an example of thinking. Yes. The thinking is happening in the black box that we call the eye, the brain, the heart, the experience, the impressions. And people are committed to solving their struggle. They want their struggle to go away. They're using the methodology because they have a real need. That's an example, gentlemen. Perfect. This is a good example, per I think. Perfect. So, Out of the box. So, mm -hmm. Perfect. So Gwen, in the um, Lean Frontiers website mm -hmm. uh, for uh, advertising about this webinar, you use the airplane photo or what I call the airplane photo. Yes. So yes. can you tell us about that? Why did you use that photo? And what is that photo actually saying? And yeah. then I've got a couple other questions about that photo. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to skip over some stuff. I've always crammed too much. And I'm also getting a little bit too excited because I can hear my voice decibel is getting <laughs> much too loud, even for me. <laughs> you are. I've never been able to stop that. And that's not a bad thing. Well, mm. <laughs> can I just, can I just, can I just, I, I want to, I want to show this little sequence. So it's, it's, 
it has to do with a visual impression. When, sure. when here's you or me or anyone in the world who is beginning to think visually, they get control of their corner of the world like this, right? They have this locus of control. It meets its boundary. But the thing is, the man or woman next to me is doing the same thing, getting control over their corner of the world. This is what makes us relax. And when we get that control, we then look to the second question, which we're not going to develop today, but I'm going to say it, which is, what do I need to share? What do I know that you need to know that I need to share so you can do your work? What do I need to share? Can you hear the we in that? I said it's not team-based, but suddenly I'm caring about you. I'm watching your emotion. I am in control of my corner of the world. I've put my standards in place, embedded them largely yeah. through borders and addresses. And now I've got the energy. I can care about you. I think the key thing you said there, Gwen, is that they embedded their standards. We have my my take on this is we have our work standards. They're there in the background somewhere. But the my big take on what you just said then is that visuality and visual thinking allows people to embed those standards in their workplace so it becomes absolutely part of their work. They That's trip right. over it all That's the time. Right. That's right. And think of it also as Oscar. opposed to a pile of documents. Yes, or asking questions or whatever yeah, or adaptive questions, whatever. behaviors. Exactly. Yeah. It has to do with behavior and it has to do with seeing the workplace as a partner, that the workplace is there to help me and is waiting to be asked. It's waiting to hold more. It's waiting to be my partner. Yeah. I, think, I think of visuality, as you said, but also as a language. And when a workplace speaks, it means we've embedded our intelligence through this thinking process into the landscape of work, and it's become a living partner to us. Sure. And, and you know, it becomes the liberation of the human spirit through that is so extraordinary, I can barely put words to it. And since you're indulging me, I'm now going to take it further. This is the need to Don't share. go too much further. We've got I know, 13 I know. minutes. Two, we've got 13 seconds, minutes left. 20 seconds. Yeah, we've got 30 minutes. We've got to get onto that photo of the airplane. I will, I will. I promise, I promise. But look what happens with the need to share. We hook up. We link. We link with others. Suddenly, we're a single organization. We're a single enterprise. We are sharing our intelligence. We are looking, where can I help the other it cre I mean, this is, these are the implementations I do, and this is what happens all the time. And people become unified. All right, let's do this one. All right, so we'll, <laughs> here we go. Oh, no, don't look at the screen yet. Okay. Um, so, Oscar, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, this, I love that picture <laughs> because I love that picture. Because with that blank slide, um, that plane's still got to get into that air bridge. So perhaps uh, without what's coming, there's a document somewhere, there's a standard that's, that some engineer has come up with in the design of that airport to allow that plane to get in to that air bridge. There's a, some, something that's in the background. But when that plane's there and the air bridge is there, that document is of no value whatsoever to the pilot who's driving the plane, in other words, doing the work, and the guy who's standing near the wave bridge, uh, air bridge with the battens or whatever they use these days. So I'm really interested on you expanding on that thought yes. that those and, that work standard is of no value right now to that pilot or the bloke with the battens. And let's say that it is full of motion. This landscape is full of motion, accidents yeah. galore. Yeah, imagine what would happen if they tried to align that plane up right now with that air bridge. <laughs> you can't go backwards. In a, you yeah, can't, yeah, exactly. There's no reverse on an airplane. No. <laughs> you can't say, oh, I think I'll try that again. Oops. Exactly. A recipe for motion. Okay. So that's the before. This is the after. And the after is instructive. This is a visually competent work area. This is a work area that speaks. Should I go through it or do you want to talk about it? No, no, oh, you please, you please. Okay. Oh, I hope I don't have it on. Oh dear, I might have it on automatic. I didn't. All right, we'll see what happens. So 
let's look at what's here. We have a flow line. This is lean. This is the critical path. Then we have a lot, and it's visual. Look, it's yellow outlined in black in a field of color. The human eye will see yellow first. On a beige background, we have a nice outline to make it pop. We have a place to give us warning about the whirling turbines. We have a place for catering. We have a predetermined place for baggage handling, loading and unloading. And we also have this, which is such an interesting configuration. And it explains how precise you can build your standards in. And this picture was taken in 1998. And since then, there's been great steps forward, but this was the first time I ever saw information on the tarmac. It, we went, it went for years, it went for decades. So to make things, go ahead, you answer the question, uh, Oscar, so that somebody else's voice is cracking. No, here. no, it's fine, keep going. Um, so I mean, what I work? see there is, is these, mm -hmm. when I, what I see there is that, mm -hmm. yellow, that yellow line is speaking to the pilot and that yellow line is saying, follow me. Follow me. And those, and those cross lines uh, are saying to the guy with the batons, if it's That's a DC-10 right. or a 727 or whatever, yes. stop here. So That's that right. document would have all that in it. That's but that right. document is, imagine That's if the right. person was standing there reading that document as all this was That's going right. on. It would be a disaster. But now they don't have that because, this, right. because visual thinking has transferred that the That's standards, right. if you like, into something that speaks. It says, That's follow right. me, stop That's here, exactly don't stand right. there, do stand That's here. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Exactly. So I have one more comment to make. We're going to go back to the before. This is more than motion. This is an economic factor in the whole community because that plane cannot land on that tarmac. You'd have to pull out 50 foot wheels to get people yeah. to be able to climb out of that plane, 50 foot staircase. And if that plane isn't there, we don't need the, the gate either. It changes the economic complexion of the terminal, of the community, of the entire region. It has, it has a huge, huge impact. When we look at this, we're capable of growing because we can easily and smoothly take care because of this embeddedness. And this, by the way, is simply the visual wear. This is now, elevated 5S. Now, this embeddedness, is 5S. You, <clears throat> ahead, you, use that, you use that word embeddedness, what I understand, because you said it, you know, a few years ago when we were first discussing this slide many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, you said embeddedness, it means it becomes part of our work. Right. If it's done really well, it becomes uh, completely ingrained, so it's part of our work. That's Can right. you just expand on that part of our work statement? Yes, embeddedness means that the partnership between the human and the so-called inanimate workplace is complete. There is a conversation going on. And if, for example, the human still makes a mistake, still engages motion, because he or she is a visual thinker, she will refine that visuality so that her behavior by design aligns with what the visual devices are. The visual devices become the supervisor of the human, even though the human designs the devices. So mm. it's a perfect partnership. It's in balance. I have made it so, and now I've made myself capable of repeatedly reaching that same level of excellence or completeness every single day. I have sure. confidence in my work. And you know what happens? This is, this is what we're talking about with control of my corner of the world. When I feel confident in my own ability and I'm able to hit that bing, bing, bing. And by the way, this is absolutely 100% true in uh, high complexity, low volume, in very slow moving environments. You just have to be clever in a different way. There's, you know, there's tech, visuality works in all environments because all environments are information based. It isn't sure. just the flow of material, it's flow period. And you can create flow by creating a visual workplace. And Ono said to us, flow where you can, pull where you must. 
Sure. So visuality is the basis. That embeddedness allows us to flow. We change as seen here. We change our adjustments into settings. That's another way of, of conceptualizing. So, no, no, just leave that slide because I, I, I think yeah, I think the other thing that um, that to me really illustrates how well this works, and uh, is that just imagine at that airport they got a new airbridge. And if the air bridge was actually a little bit bigger or a bit longer mm -hmm. and the plane had to come in, mm -hmm. you know, one foot further to further mm -hmm. away, mm -hmm. you know, they could write emails, they could send memos or whatever you do back Be then. Be careful. Be Pay attention. But, oh, mm -hmm. That's dangerous. To make that plane come in in the right spot, all they have to do is scrub that yellow line out and move it to the left, a frac uh, one foot, because the line is always saying, follow me. So when we, when we adjust our standards to get the workplace to follow those adjusted standards, when it's truly visual, yes, excellent. All, you, all you need to do is adjust your visuals. You don't need to send out emails and memos, which most excellent. people ignore anyway. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So that's when it's really speaking. Excellent. And, and for those of you who are saying, well, you know, we're changing the flow, you're thinking in your mind, we change the flow a lot in our, in our company. Yeah, well, great. As you get smarter, your borders will get smarter, your exactly. visuals will get smarter. And before you begin visuality, you learn how to remove those borders and those uh, visual uh, uh, devices quickly if they're in your floor. You, you figure out that formula so that you can do it overnight. And yet exactly. the borders will last for 18 months. That, that's our, our standard for borders. It's a like very instructive. We've yeah, got right. four minutes left. Yes. Um, there was a couple of questions, one from Olga Alva, for example, and another from uh, Javier Perez. Good. Uh, they were talking about engaging management and leadership in visual thinking. Can you, I, don't, I know this is a big topic for you. You've got now I, three I minutes. Would... <laughs> You've got three minutes to give us a quick overview on your thoughts on that. Well, there Sorry are Sorry to put aspects. time pressure on you. <laughs> there are two aspects of that. Engaging management on one level means engaging management so they support a visual workplace elsewhere, not specifically for them, that sure. they require a workplace that can think, hey, let's adopt Ono's people come to our place not to work, but to think. Let's adopt that as our next two or three year goal. That's our vision that people come to think. So management has to commit to that or it doesn't happen because it involves the resource of some money, but definitely lost production time. And you got to figure that out. Is it worth it? So that's one aspect of leadership re related to visuality. But the other aspect related to visual leadership or the principles and practices of visual leadership is it's a different methodology. It's a methodology that is different, has the same principles as operators, but through the solutions that are correct for, um, for leadership. And the I is prominent in that. There, it, it, actually, there's no way that I can say more without opening several I understand. terms of art that will just be confounding to people. What does she mean by that? So, yeah. but, but it, it is one of the doorways. So in, in the 30 seconds that's left, shame <laughs> on you. Uh, how could I ever agree to do this? I'm such a talker, but I've been doing this for 35 years. So I've got a lot of material and I love my material. There's my doorways. So the doorways have to do with that. And you'll see doorway number four, this, these doorways are segmentations of your work um, your work, your departments, your categories of work function. There's the operators, supervisors, engineers, supervisors, planners, executives. Okay, they're, they're all segmented. There's your machine, there's your office, there's the macro environment, and there's your multi sites. They each <laughs> get a methodology. Yeah, right. A visual methodology. And so, doorway number four, we're talking about visual standards. And th that's the good book up there in the upper right for explaining these 10 doorways, uh, in case you're wondering. But, but this doorway is for senior leadership, and it includes metrics, visual problem solving, and the technologies of 
leadership, executive leadership and supervisory leadership. Uh, it's, it's, it's my next book. So I, in fact, I'm writing, I have to write two books in order to cover it. One good for executives with, and one for supervisors. Good luck. Gwen, thank yeah. you. We need to pull up now and look. Can we not love, do it this fast next time? Can we have? I love the conversations with mm, you, and I love just... your enthusiasm. I have since two thousand and seven when I first met you. So thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I, found, um, I feel so wound up. To, to everyone beautiful. who's everyone who's been watching, uh, when Lean Frontier send out the recording, they're going to also include my email address, but far more importantly, they're going to include Gwen's email address because I saw a number of comments coming up um, that we were unable to cover. So please email Gwen directly, uh, or if you have any for me, we're left far less likely, email me directly, and I'll very happily answer those questions. I want to say so one I'll thing about that. Our website is visualworkplace.com, and there, it is full of free information, videos and articles. If you write to me, I'd rather, have a, I'd rather reschedule a phone call because I writing takes me a very long time i'm sorry but but we can have a chat yeah and gwen's a good talker if you haven't already gathered that everyone so over to you skylar thanks again skylar lean frontiers for hosting thank this you, gwen and i gwen and i really appreciate it we really do yes thank you thank you oscar and thank you skylar thank you everyone Thank Let you, Gwen please. and Oscar. Just a reminder, you will receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours. And as Oscar just said, I will send an email out to everybody that has Oscar's and Gwen's email in there. So if you do have any questions, you can reach out to them directly. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you, Gwen and Oscar. We will see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Skylar. Thanks, Gwen.